Humans are evolving and have been for a very long time. Advantageous mutations and subtle changes over many years have developed us into the people we are today. While there are many adaptations that have contributed to our survival, there is one crucial element to our continuation, birth. Humans are the only species that require assisted births. Many animals have painful births, but humans are on a whole nother level. Our babies are just under the size of a woman's pelvic opening, which makes them very hard to deliver. This gave me the question, how has female pelvic evolution affected the birthing process over time? The birthing process is interesting to look at because getting babies out is not the only responsibility the pelvis has. The human pelvis is also responsible for bipedalism, our upright, two-legged walking ability. Some adaptations that could have been made in the groin region to make delivery easier on women would not have necessarily been beneficial for travel by foot. This is a difficult topic to look at as only three complete female pelvis fossils have been found, one from Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy, and two from Homo erectus, one from Ethiopia and one from Kenya. Both the Homo erectus fossils were said to be Australopithecus-like. Despite this difficulty, they are still very useful in inferring a natural progression of changes. Lucy, who was dated at 3 to 3.6 million years old, had a pelvis that was very narrow compared to modern humans. Looking at skulls from this era, which were characteristically small at about 430 cc, we can presume that her delivery was more primitive and she did not have a terrible amount of pain in childbirth. The two Homo erectus pelvises we have are a bit wider and more circular shaped. Skulls from this era was characteristically larger than Australopithecus afarensis, but still much smaller than modern humans. A possibly unusually large child, Naryo Kotomboy, had a cranial capacity of 900 cc. Modern humans are about 1,000. We can presume that childbirth was moving towards being a more painful process, but it was still primitive in how babies were delivered. Researchers reconstructed the pelvis of Taboon, a Neanderthal woman, to see what the other side of evolution looked like. While they could infer that birth was difficult, it wasn't nearly as difficult as modern human women. Neanderthal's skulls were at least as big as ours, but the way women gave birth was still primitive. On to humans. As stated before, the pelvis evolved to be able to walk upright and give birth to what our Larson text calls big brain babies. So instead of adaptations that would make birthing harder but walking easier, the pelvis changed to allow for rotational birth, in which the baby twists as she comes out, which still allowed women to stand tall. This is shown in side views of the pelvis. It is curved to allow for the turning of the baby, as shown here. Humans are still changing. According to the British Broadcasting Company, a modern procedure has the ability to change the course of our evolution. Cesarean sections, C-sections, have greatly increased birthing success and have virtually removed fistula from vocabulary in first world countries. However, with continued use, it could affect the gene pool and make the trait for more narrow pelvises, ones that wouldn't be optimal for giving birth, more prominent. Researchers are saying they don't believe we will ever get to a point where most deliveries happen by C-section, but events like this are fascinating to look at from an evolutionary perspective.